Welcome to the Design a Bathroom in 20 Minutes Pro Kitchen Software Tutorial. This tutorial will demonstrate how easy and efficient it is to use Pro Kitchen Software to design an elegant bathroom in less than 20 minutes. I'll use this design here as an example. When you first open Pro Kitchen, this dialog box will appear if this box isn't checked. There are two parts to Pro Kitchen appearance, how the menus and toolbars are displayed, and dialog style what the pop-up dialog boxes will look like. Classic is the familiar interface from previous versions of Pro Kitchen. Standard, or what was introduced as Ribbon, is a more graphical contemporary interface that is completely customizable. You can pick and choose from either option until you find what works best for you. For this tutorial, I'll use Standard for both. To get started, first navigate to the catalog panel and select the catalog you want to design in. If the catalog isn't displayed in black on the catalog drop-down list, scroll down to the gray selections and click on it to initialize it. Once the catalog is initialized and the tree appears, you can start your design. I'll create a new design by clicking on the blue grid icon at the top that represents New Design. It will launch the Design Settings dialog box and I can begin to fill in the information needed for this design. It's very important to give your design a name right at the beginning. Notice I'm only using underscores instead of spaces. You should get into the practice of only using letters, numbers, and underscores in your design names because other characters can cause problems with cloud storage, autosave, and backups. Default settings are your standard settings in Pro Kitchen. Design settings overwrite the default settings for a single design only, so anything unique to this design you will set here in the design settings. If you use the CRM in Pro Kitchen, you can bring that information into this design under the Users tab. If you don't make any changes in the Design Settings tabs, your default settings are applied. Under the Textures tab, set the countertop, backsplash, flooring, wall covering, and ceiling textures that are specific to this design. Pro Kitchen has more than 500 catalogs and 1,500 Sherwin-Williams colors, so it's easy for you to impress your clients. For example, this customer has an existing doll tile marble floor tile. So I can select that to make the design more realistic. I'll navigate to the flooring, click the Select button, Open the Doll Tile Catalog folder, Marble Tile, find and select their existing color in the bottom panel and click OK. I can even rotate the floor image to set the tile direction, horizontal or vertical. Let's say this customer also brought in a Sherwin-Williams paint swatch for their bathroom walls. I can take the swatch number and enter it into the search field at the top to find its exact match. I'll select that swatch for the wall covering and click OK. To set any other textures as needed and then click OK to save the design settings. The next step is to set your global specifications. Navigate to the View and Settings tab at the top and select the Global Options icon. Global specifications set the style choices for your chosen catalog, like the wood species, finish color, door and drawer styles, and knobs or bar pulls. It's important for you to set your specs first because some of the colors and choices are not available in every cabinet line. The options available for each line in the global settings of your chosen catalog will be displayed on the right hand side. Start at the top, select the specification settings from the left, and double click on an option displayed on the right to place it in the list on the left. Depending on the selection, you will be prompted to apply any markups for pricing. Enter your percentage and then click OK. All global settings should be set in the order that they are listed. Even if you're not going to use a specification setting, options select None to complete the global specifications. Then click the X in the upper right hand corner of the global specifications view panel to temporarily close it. You can always reopen view panels at any time using the View and Settings tab at the top. Now let's start drafting by drawing the walls on your plan view using the tools found under the Draw and Place tab. When sketching walls in Pro Kitchen, remember to always draw clockwise, 
left to right, or else your wall zones will be on the outside of your room. Select the wall shapes tools to use a predetermined layout and adjust the measurements, or select the sketch tool to manually draw your walls. Click on your plan view to start drawing and nudge your mouse in the direction that you wish the wall to be drawn. In the info panel above the catalog panel on the left hand side, the dimensions of the wall you're drawing will be displayed and the width field is already highlighted indicating it's ready to be edited. You can type in the exact measurement for that wall simply by taking your hand off of your mouse and typing in the measurement of your wall and hitting the enter key on your keyboard to set and start drawing the adjoining walls. Repeat the process until all of your walls are drawn for the perimeter of your room and then drop in any interior walls at the end. For this design, I need to extrude the right wall and then create a radius wall. I can do both by right clicking on the wall, selecting the wall number, and opening a submenu of edit tools for that wall. Click extrude and a box will follow your mouse on the selected wall indicating the extrusion to start point. Position your mouse or type in the exact measurement from the left or right end of the wall in the info panel and hit the enter key. Now a bounding box will follow your mouse indicating the extrusion width, depth, and space. Again, you can use the info panel to type in the exact measurement of the extrusion and this time use the tab key on your keyboard to move from one field in the info panel to another. Then hit the enter key to place and lock your extrusion into those according measurements. Now I'll right click on the extruded wall and select the attributes from the bottom of its toolbox. In the wall attributes, I can set a precise radius wall under the curvature tab and set the dimensions accordingly. I can also change the color of this one wall only under the textures tab in the walls attributes. Select the select button, choose the texture you'd like and click OK to save and then click OK to save the walls attributes and return to your plan view. I need to change the top wall's texture as well, so I'll repeat that process by right clicking on the wall, opening its toolbox, select its attributes, textures tab, find the texture I want, and click OK to save. Now I'll save my design file to my computer and the cloud before I proceed. Before I start to place my objects, I'll add the doors and windows I need. To place doors and windows, select either the doors or windows icon found in the top toolbar. In the pop-up select and place dialog box, follow the tree until you find the type of door you're looking for. Once selected from the bottom panel of the pop-up box, you can adjust its dimensions before placing on a wall and then click place. Your cursor will turn into a plus sign indicating the place slash edit mode and you can then click directly on the wall that you wish to place the door on. The door will then move with your mouse so you can lock it into position. Again, notice the info panel. Type in the exact measurement from the left or right end of the wall and hit the enter key on your keyboard to place and lock it into that position. The Select and Place dialog box will reappear so you can place more doors or windows. So I'll find the windows I need for my radius wall. This time I'll open the Windows folder and follow the tree until I find the window I'm looking for. Again, I can adjust its dimensions before placing on a wall and then click Place. Windows will snap to a radius wall and you can move it into position by using your mouse or the info box. The Select and Place dialog box will reappear, but click Cancel to dismiss and return to editing. I need to center this window on the wall, so I'll use the Center tool found in the Windows right-click toolbox. Once selected from the toolbox, your cursor will turn into a plus sign again and you can then click directly on the object that you wish to center your selected object on. Then voila, it's precisely centered on the wall. I'm going to make some attribute changes to this window, like adding a view that will be rendered in 3D and HD, and also adding sunlight to create a more realistic room light. 
Select the attributes from the Windows right click toolbox and under the general tab, I can add sunlight and select a view that will be shown. Both changes will be seen once rendered in 3D and HD, but it's good to set them now. Click OK to save. I need this exact same window, so instead of placing another one and making attribute changes again, I'll simply copy and paste this one twice. Right click on the window and select the copy tool. Your cursor will turn into a plus sign and then click on the wall where you'd like to paste the copied window. Again, you can move it into position with your mouse or use the info panel to type in the exact measurements from the left or right. Repeat the process for the third window. To see your doors and windows, create some elevation views of your design. To do so, simply select and right click on the wall you'd like to see an elevation view of and click the inside elevation from its toolbox. ProKitchen will default your elevation view panel above your plan view, but you can rearrange it simply by clicking and dragging the view panel to a new area on your screen. ProKitchen will also name your created elevation views as L1, L2, etc. Rename them to something familiar by right-clicking and select Edit View L1 and typing in a new name for your elevation view. I need to create a shower niche on the wall that I'll be placing my shower on. Shower niches can be executed by using ProKitchen's freeform wall opening object found in the Architectural Elements catalog under the Doors and Windows Frames folder. Select it and place it just like a door or window. Then, in your elevation view, you can right click and open its attributes to edit the dimensions of the freeform wall opening. Click OK to save. And then you can select the up down tool from its right click toolbox to move it up or down on the wall as needed. Now, since that wall opening goes through the wall, we'll need to use a floor user shape to fill in the depth by a half an inch. Back in the architectural elements catalog, open the user shapes folder. Select and place the floor user shape and place it on the floor next to the wall with the freeform opening. Now, open the floor user shape's attributes from its right click toolbox and change the dimensions to match your wall opening. Then, navigate to the textures tab and select the texture of this user shape. Click OK to save and use the up, down, and in and out tools from its toolbox to move the user shape up on the wall and then back in, into the wall opening. Lastly, I'll use a wall user shape to create a tile siding on the half of the right wall that will be enclosed by the shower. I'll select and place it from the Architectural Elements catalog and then open its attributes to change its dimension and select its texture accordingly. Now that I have all of my walls, windows, and doors set in place, I can finally start adding the objects to my design. Let's start with the cabinets. Over in the catalog panel, follow the tree to find the base cabinets you're looking for. I'm looking for some full height door vanity sink bases, so I'll select the vanity slash bath folder from my sample imperial catalog, vanity base, vanity sink base cabinets, vanity sink base full height doors, van sink base 21 inches deep, and find the SKU that fits the measurements needed. A 3D preview of the object will appear in the info panel above, and then I can click, drag, and drop inside of the wall zone outlining the wall that I wish to place this cabinet on. Placing objects inside of a wall zone will automatically rotate and snap the cabinet according to that wall. The cabinet will move with your mouse so you can move it into position while snapped to the wall. Click again to lock it into the position needed. If you know the SKU of the cabinet, you can use the Find feature to search it by SKU, measurement, or keyword. I'll type in the VDB243221. It finds it and I can now drag and drop it to my wall zone. 
I'll repeat this process to place the rest of the cabinets for this bathroom. I can quickly add my sinks and faucets without leaving my design by right clicking on my sink base cabinets and selecting the attributes from its toolbox. In the attributes, I'll navigate to the sinks and faucets tab. I can change plumbing catalogs to Kohler and use its catalog tree to find the sink and faucet I want. Bathroom fixtures, sinks, drop in, find the option I want using the thumbnail images that appear on mouse hover, select it, and the measurements will appear. If the sink is too large for my base, Pro Kitchen will tell me. I'll click add to place it in my base. Then repeat to find my faucet. Faucets, deck mount, find the one I want, and if there's options available, the dialog box will let me know and I can select and add them and then click add. The info box on the right shows me a 3D rendering of my sink base with my choices added. Click OK to save the attributes and add it to your design. Since I need two sink bases, I'll use the copy and paste feature again to save myself the time of adding a sink and faucet in cabinet attributes twice. Then, once all of the cabinets are added, add your countertop by navigating to the Sea Tops and Moldings tab and clicking the Add All Sea Tops icon. Now it's time to add appliances and plumbing. Navigate to the Draw and Place tab and select the plumbing icon to launch the plumbing select and place dialog box. I can use objects from Pro Kitchen's custom plumbing catalog or change the dialog box to Kohler catalog using the drop down list at the top. Then again, follow the catalog tree to find the object you're looking for and the options available will be displayed in the bottom panel. Select the object and then click place. Click inside of the wall zone that you wish to place the object in and then move and lock it into position with your mouse or using the info panel. The plumbing select and place dialog box will reappear so you can place more objects. Pro Kitchen's plumbing catalog has some great bathroom accessories like towel bars and toilet tissue holders found under the accessories subfolder. I'll use this to add a towel bar by the shower and add a toilet tissue bar by the toilet. Then click cancel to dismiss and return to your plan view. Some wall items might need up down placement adjustments so it's a good idea to take a look at your elevation views to see where everything was placed. Lastly, let's add some decorative items to bring this bathroom to life. Under the Draw and Place tab, select the Decoratives icon to launch the Decorative Select and Place dialog box. Here, we can add elements like mirrors, towels, outlets, etc. Again, follow the catalog tree to find the object you're looking for and then select it from the bottom panel and click Place to place it on your plan view. I can adjust the size and dimensions of each decorative item by opening its attributes and typing in new dimensions and clicking OK to save. We're done designing, so now let's see our design in 3D HD. Click the 3D icon to render the design in 3D. Once rendered, adjust the 3D view to the position that looks best using the Rotate and Shift tools in your top toolbar. Then, turn it into an HD photo quality image by clicking the HD icon. Set the photo and resolution sizes and then click Render. And that's it! An outstanding bathroom design completed in less than 20 minutes with Pro Kitchen software.